is upon us. And so should the church be afraid? No. Not at all. Not one ounce of fear. The Lord hasn't given you the spirit of fear. Love. Power. And sound mind. Man, I'm not running away from hell. I'm running straight at it. I'm not afraid of the devil. He's afraid of you. He is scared to death that this 145 people in this building would start praying in one accord. He knows you to bring revival in the man. When you're real sick and you got all kinds of problems and you go in there and the doctor runs a few tests and he sees exactly what's wrong and he says, I got this, I understand your situation, but I'd rather not discuss it with you. <laughs> How does that make you feel? You didn't come there for him to tell you he can't discuss it. You got a problem. So you come to get the answer. First, you need the diagnosis. So let's diagnose the world right now. What kind of shapes it is? Oh, they call evil good, good evil. Because iniquity abound, the love of many. Right? There's a great falling away. Before the end comes, men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They'll be heady, high-minded, truth breakers, fears, and contempt. Oh, thank you. Without natural affection. We're living in a time now where because of the pure wickedness that runs through the world, the murder rates are off the charts, the drive-by shootings are insane, the drug cartels butchering and beheading people in Mexico, yeah. folks dying in the back of trailers trying to escape yeah. because they're trying to find a better life yeah. only to find themselves cooking in the back of a trailer. Yeah. Little children being abducted off the streets and right off their front lawns. Right. Sold into sex trafficking. Murdered. Left for dead. People, folks, you don't understand. We're so blessed. Yes. We are, I can't even tell you how blessed we are. I remember preaching in India 20 years ago when these people came. 3,000 came. Most of them didn't have shoes to wear. They crawled out of the jungles in Orissa, India. 3,000 people and nobody had a car. Nobody had a car. They walked 14 miles, 12 miles, carrying grandmother on stretchers. There was no doctor. A Solomon Rao told me we have no doctor within 245 miles of here. Not one physician. This was the poorest state in the poorest country in the world. It doesn't get worse than this. Poverty is a curse. Yes, it and the is. people needed help. Yes. And it's a, it's a country that worships a million gods. Yeah. And they try everyone because they're trying to get a remedy. They don't know. They don't know. The they radical don't know. Hindus keep them oppressed and will arrest preachers and preach. They call it proselyting to the Hindus trying to get them to Jesus Christ. They even stuck a gun to my head after the first sermon. Praise God. Thank God those guys bailed me out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I never had that happen before. I was there for a three-day crusade after first service. I said, I don't know. Do I need to go back home? God said, no. Stand in here. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey. All right, God. Okay. I might as well ride this out now. I'm already in here. Listen, folks, they brought people that were sick everywhere, and they brought them forward, and a lot of folks got saved. But then when they started bringing up... I, I made a mistake, the pastor said. I asked for an altar call. We have about 400 people coming except Christ, okay? Hey. But then when I said, if there's anybody sick here, we'll pray for you. He said, he looked at me and said, oh boy. <laughs> 2,000 people came forward. It took 40 pastors and about two hours of prayer to get through them all. 
Praise God. They brought people on, uh, they brought people with broken legs. They brought people blind. They brought people with every kind of condition you can imagine. And as we prayed and prayed and prayed, people were getting healed on the spot. Amen. People were literally Amen. being, I mean, miracles. Amen. And I saw things I never dreamed I'd ever see. And God said, and I knew it wasn't me. I didn't have enough faith for it. Praise God. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Every time I saw something, I said, wow, that's God right there. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. And it is. It's always God right there. Yeah. Yeah. And so I began to realize that when the desperate people have sometimes have to take desperate measures. Yeah. And so in this world we're in, the world is going to be in a desperate condition. Listen to me. They're going to face something they never dreamed they'll face. They're going to face atrocities and, and they're going to face things that, that will blow the mind. And if you don't have Christ in your life, just even as this is coming upon, we're not even there yet, but just as it's coming, as it is coming, you will see people literally, suicide rates getting so high, drug addiction off the charts. People will be depressed and in despair. Folks will not know where to turn. They will literally think that, and then because of that, there will be no faith. Jesus said, when I come, will I find any faith left? Yes. Now, he will in the church. Believe me. Yes. Glory. Amen. And so also, the Bible tells us that there's going to be the separation of the sheep from the goats. Yep. You're going to separate, put them on the left and put them on the right. Amen. said, let the angels do it. He said, just let them all grow along together. Let the tares grow along with the wheat. Don't try to pull them out. Amen. He said, I'll separate them when I get there. Right. Matter of fact, John said... He said, there's one that cometh after me that was preferred before me, whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to stoop down and loose. <laughs> oh, praise God. I indeed baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor. In other words, there's this big barn, and then it's open on either end, and they would bring the wind bring the wheat in from the field and they would pile it in the middle of the barn and then they'd take their pitchforks and they would stick it in the hay and, and, and the wheat and throw it up. When they threw it up, the wheat would fall down but the chaff would blow on out and it would just, it's called purging. Alright, purging. And praise the Lord. When, when Christ comes, when He comes, He's, he's oh, oh, praise God. Praise God. He's going to know your name. If you're born again, He's going to know your name. He comes, he's not going to leave one of us behind. Not one, not one, not one, not one, not one. Not one. <laughs> Let's read it. And the Bible says, and I saw, where was I? Where was I? Somebody help me. Where am I? Mike? 14. And here's what it says. Praise God. And the, and the, oh yeah, he was called with his vesture dipped in blood. His name is called Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's a, wow. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Oh, oh. and with it she, he should smite the nations and he should rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath his vesture in his thigh, a name written, King of Kings. And Lord of the Lord, can you say that? And I can see the devil as the great battle of Armageddon begins. When the armies of God start to come, when Christ comes with ten thousands of his saints, I can see the devil start to shake in his boots. I can see him look at his demons, his Nephilim, his weird beasts that he raises up out of hell. I see him looking at the Messiah and he already knows what's going to happen. His days are numbered. And I think there's going to be a day as the, the heaven's gates swing wide open. Multitude, John said, I saw a number that no man can number coming down from God out of heaven. <laughs> Prepare what? As a bride, a door for her husband. And I can see us as we come into the gates. Can you see it? We used to sing that little song. Is that the light of my home I see? Do I feel a breeze from the crystal sea? Is that my Lord standing high? 
If that's the lights of my home, it's a welcome sight to me. Oh, yes. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Get on your feet. I'm telling you. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. We're in the final countdown. He's coming. And he's coming after those that are ready. Kevin, yeah, come on. Praise the Lord. He's coming after those that are ready. He's coming after those that have got their robes on. He's coming after those that have been washed in the blood. He's come, come on, preachers. He's coming after those that have been the life's flowing fountain and had a drink of the living. Are you thirsty today? Listen, are you thirsty? There's a woman down at the well. And Jesus said, if you knew who I was, you'd have asked me to give you some living water. And she said, how can you give us water? You have nothing to draw from. Are you greater than Jacob, our father Jacob, who dug us this well? And he said, praise God. <laughs> Before Jacob was, I am. A praise the Lord, I am he. So today, if you're here and you're hungry and thirsty and you want to be set free, I need you to do this right now. I need you to step out of the pew. Walk down the aisle. You might have said, Pastor, I was once saved. Boy, I've been thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Then come on to the water of life. Come on and drink again. Come on. If you've never been saved, come on. In the name of Jesus, come on and be set free. Come on. Let's get a drink. I said, let's get a drink. Let's get a drink. That's the way. Let's get a drink. Let's get a drink of the living water. Praise God. Somebody shout amen. Somebody clap your hands. Somebody break loose, break out, break free. Tell somebody, let me out of the pew. I got to get right. I got to get up there. I got to pray. I got to get out. I got to be make sure my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God's been good to me. He has spared me this many years. Come on. Come on.